What's up, guys? Welcome to the Don't Forget to Love podcast with me, Mara Sullivan. As you guys know from the title, this episode is all about this crazy decade that is the Roaring Twenties. I'm only 25. I'm smack in the middle, so I can only talk about what I have experienced and learned and things that have helped me so far. Also, things that I've learned from people older than me that I have applied to my own life during these years. I feel like I've lived so many lives just in my early 20s alone, graduating college, getting my master's degree, working, COVID, quitting jobs wasting money saving money retirement um, grief having my mom pass away friendships dating hobbies figuring out my health and taking care of myself sleep social life just all the things that have come up in my 20s so far that I will be diving into today um, it is such a roller coaster for everyone just becoming like a quote-unquote adult <laughs> and figuring things out even though legally I guess I'm an adult and I have some wisdom, but I'm honestly just making this thing up as I go along. Like, I am still a kid who knows absolutely nothing. I feel like none of us really knows what we're doing. We're all just kind of out here doing the best we can, especially in your 20s. I just feel like so many of us are just out here throwing stuff to the wall to see what sticks. But that is what makes this decade so crazy and so fun and so special. The 20s are so different for everyone. I have friends who are married, some have kids, some are single, some are dating, some are still in school, some are living alone. Um, like some have roommates. Um, some people in their 20s are working crazy hours. Some people are making a ton of money. Some people are living on ramen <laughs> and like somewhere in between. Everyone is in such different places. Before jumping into this episode, I'll do a little life recap because it has been a while. Thank you guys for always showing up. Um, when I do upload because I know that my recording schedule is not the most consistent I definitely do want to upload every week like that has always been the goal but right now your girl is just working like seven days a week and so I am just you know recording when I can but a little life update I went to Tampa Florida to visit some family and it was my first time in Tampa I loved it normally when I go to Florida I go to Orlando because I go to Disney World but this is my was my first time in Tampa it was so much fun my cousins took me to Siesta Key Beach which is one of the top beaches in the country it is gorgeous if you are ever in the Florida area highly recommend it is an incredible beach siesta key um part of my family who lives there is from england and we had some family like from that side fly here that week and it was so so nice to just be around people from a different culture and you guys i don't know how i've never had an english scone before like i've had scones but like starbucks sells the little vanilla ones i've had those but i'm talking about like just a plain real scone one of my family members literally like just put like a case of scones from england in our suitcase and brought them over from london and i'm about to go on a whole rant about like my first time scone and tea experience so feel free to skip like the next minute or two but the brand of scones that she brought over was morrison's and it's not sold here in the u.s but um, the tea that I also have for the first time, you guys know I love tea. I literally only drink water, coffee, and tea. The brand is PG Tips, and that is sold here in the U.S., but it's expensive. I think because it's not a U.S. brand, but I ordered that tea. PG Tips, by the way, like I said, if you haven't had it, it's just a black tea, but it like really is England's best. It is so good. I came home, I ordered some of that along with the plain scones, which I never knew were so freaking hard to find. Like here... In America, we just have, like, a lot of flavored scones, at least in my area. And, uh, like, you know, it's just American to put sugar in <laughs> so much stuff and everything. And so it's, like, I didn't know how impossible it is to find, like, plain scones. And apparently, uh, that's not a thing here. It's not really much of a thing. Um, like, ours are, like, always flavored. And so I did find some, but I wanted the ones as close as I could find to the brand that my family brought over from London. And so I found some with really good reviews and, um, what was the website? British, Britishfoodclub.com. Yes, that is a real thing. And the brand of scones that I got are Haywood and Paget Devon Plain Scones. If you 
are a scone tea lover, highly recommend Haywood and Paget scones. They are so good. They taste just like the brand my cousin brought over from London. And I got a couple packs because I can freeze them and have them for a while. The shipping is ex- was expensive, at least for me, um, depending on what area you have them shipped to. It'll probably be less expensive, but be, like I said, I, because I don't, it's a, it's not a U.S. brand. I'm pretty sure it's not, and so the shipping is pricey, but it was worth it because, like I said, I got a couple of packs and I stocked up. But I have been craving scones and tea like since I was with them, and so it's basically a new pers- personality trait for me. And like it's just so my vibe. Like you guys know, I love anything calming and wholesome and cultural. I really like the PG Tips tea, like I said specifically, because like it gives me the same kick as coffee, but without the crash and headaches that I sometimes get when I drink coffee. I'm also trying the Yorkshire tea brand. My cousin made me um, like that, like traditional like English tea with a little milk and sugar, like the proper English way. I drink everything straight, but this tea I have to have like the proper way. So I will be adding a little milk and sugar in mine when I have it. Like not every single time, but I'll have it for the experience. Last weekend, you guys, I met Adrian Bylone Houghton. She had a pop up in DC for her clothing brand Lavoot, aka Chuchi from the Cheetah Girls. I could not believe that I freaking met her. I watched all three Cheetah Girls movies before I went to the pop up to pregame. Like the pop up was so nice. Adrian Houghton is absolutely stunning. She was always my favorite Cheetah Girl. I literally was a Cheetah Girl in kindergarten for Halloween. Fun fact, I love her so freaking much. I went of course to meet her and shop the collection but I had no idea that Israel Houghton her husband of course and my absolute favorite singer songwriter musician artist of all time I did not know he was going to be there I love Israel Houghton and New Breed I Am Not Forgotten, Friend of God, Alpha and Omega, like those are the songs that I grew up on. His song, It's Not Over, is one of the songs that has literally been getting me through this season, like the hardest time in my life, just losing my mom. And I got to meet him, like, and I also got to, like, talk to him for a little bit. He was so sweet. They both are. I love them so much as a couple, but I'm just such a huge fan, like, of them both individually that it was just such a great event. It was so cool. I'm so glad I went, and I'm so glad that she's doing these pop-ups. She's actually doing a ton, like, she's doing them in a ton of different cities, like, within the next few weeks, and so check out her schedule on Instagram. If you are interested, highly recommend her Levoot clothing. It's not just clothes, like, it's clothes it's loungewear suits um this one is like mainly focusing on her new line of suits it's bags it's jewelry highly recommend the line i have i had already like shopped um the brand like when she first came out with it a couple years ago so i'd already had a few pieces but i just i love i love 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 her so much sorry there's like an ambulance right outside my window (laughs) <laughs> but that is what I have been up to. Work, of course, nothing else crazy planned this month. Oh, I did finish Love is Blind. And if I start talking about it, like, I'll never get to the topic of this episode. But this season was really, really good. Like, not good for true love, honestly. But it was not good for meeting a potential spouse, which is, I know, like, which is literally, literally the point of the show. But entertainment wise this season of love is blind was so good and that's all i'm gonna say because like i said if i start talking if i start talking about it this whole episode is gonna end up being a love is blind recap but this season was entertaining if nothing else i love this season i'm still getting caught up on the bachelor so far i have not spoiled it for myself i'm trying really hard not to knock on wood i want to finish it as fast as possible before like the ending gets spoiled for me but so far it hasn't knock on wood like i said I'm looking forward to Easter, Resurrection Sunday. I'm looking forward to warmer weather. It is absolutely freezing here in Maryland. It's so annoying. Like, guys, it was literally snowing, like, one morning two days ago. Like, it was snowing. Like, it did, it didn't last long, but the fact that it even happened was just wild. Like, I have never been so over winter, like, than I am right now. Like, I, especially after, like, coming, just coming back from Tampa and being there for a few days, this winter has been so long for me. I feel like, like, I forget what it's like for it to be hot outside here. Like, I, I need, I need the heat. <laughs> I do. Like, I just need a change of season. Um, but it is staying light outside longer, which is great. But without further ado, let's talk about the Roaring Twenties. 
I will talk about money first since establishing some type of financial independence usually happens early 20s, if not sooner. Um, with everything that I'm sharing, I am not an expert, not an advisor. I'm just sharing what I've learned and things that have helped me and worked for me so far. Um, I started working pretty young, like around 15, 16. I feel like that's like the normal summer job, maybe like a mall job age. I started babysitting around that time. That has become my biggest side hustle now. I'm able to charge a lot of money to like for nannying because I've had so much experience, especially with infants. Most families pay more because so many people are just like honestly like scared of infants and they do just require more work. I work part time in college. Um, and so if you're in school and you have the time, even if it's just two or three days a week or a few hours in the evening or whenever you have some free time, I recommend working while you're in school if you can just to have some of your own money for books and stuff and then like some saved for after college. Like I said, if you can, I know it's not possible for everyone. And even if you aren't able to save what you make in college, at least you'll be in the habit of working a little bit and you get some experience and can start building a resume. If you get refund checks, please, please, please spend them wisely. I did not. I spent my college refund checks on clothes and dumb stuff that I did not need at all. If I knew then what I know now, <laughs> like, of course, like hindsight is always twenty twenty. I would have just put put that money in a savings account. This one goes without saying, but if you are already working, um, open up a bank account. I have a checking and savings. I also got a credit card when I was in college so that I could build credit. I knew that once I graduated, like if I wanted a car or an apartment or both or a house, like in this country, you need credit for almost every major per purchase like that. I got Discover to this day. I still only have that one credit card. I only use Discover. Um, I'm not sure if they still do it, but when I was in school, Discover offered a like a, like a lot of perks for students. I remember getting something like more money back with a good GPA at the end of the semester and stuff like that. Just remember that credit is not your money. You have to pay that money back. And so I like just having one um, for where I am in life right now. Like um, I hate debt, but like I said, having good credit history is important when making those big, like, quote unquote, like adult purchases most of the time, not all the time. Like you can definitely get a car, a house, apartment, whatever with no credit. In my experience, it's just been a lot easier process, um, to get those things when you do have credit history. Credit just shows lenders that they can trust you to pay them and pay them on time. I like just keeping the things that I have billed on auto pay on my credit card because I know it's the same amount every month and I know I'm paying for those things every month regardless, like subscriptions or my internet and phone bills are really good ones. I used to use my credit card for big purchases like concert tickets or flights, but now I try to just use it for the re recurring payments to keep the bill low. And I also like pay, now I just pay cash for the big stuff because Honestly, like if I can't pay cash for it, I shouldn't really be buying it in the first place. And so that's another pro tip. Buy only what you can afford. It sounds simple, but it's so much easier said than done, especially in your 20s when you want to look good and go out and have fun and do all these things that require money. It is so important to learn how to tell yourself no when you need to when it comes to spending and not letting yourself get out of control. Like I said, clothes was definitely my weakness in college. I went to an HBCU and the thing about black people is that we gonna look good no matter how broke we are. And I fell into that trap of wanting to have like the cute outfits and the designer bags to take the class and stuff. When in reality, everyone else there was also a broke college student. Like you live and you learn. Now I spend on experiences way more than things. I would much rather have a plane ticket than a Chanel bag. Like now later in life, I'll probably be spending on both. But right now I want to save as much as possible, but still enjoy my life. Which brings me to the next topic of wanting to have fun, but also needing to pay bills and save and just be an adult. Like you have you have to decide what's really worth it for you to spend on and what's not. And also if there are like more inexpensive ways of doing what you want, look into that. For example, I have a favorite coffee shop here in Baltimore. It is called Needs. Shout out to Needs. That is like my spot. I love Needs. Um, K-N-E-A-D-S. It's so good. 
Um, I actually go there just for the croissants, not even the coffee. And so like I'll just make my coffee or tea at home and um, I'll just get the croissant when I go. And that's like a treat. I'll go like two or three times a month but the croissants are so freaking good and they are huge like i'm not gonna lie like they are massive croissants and they're they're so good but that's just a little treat i do not have a budget and i'm just putting that out there because i know that's like such a big thing term whatever you want to call it when you're trying to get your finances together i'm just really intentional about living below my means and also say also having multiple streams of income i am not a fan of having all my eggs in one basket and relying solely on one job um for my whole livelihood at the same time obviously there is nothing wrong with having one job as your main source it's just even more important to manage your money well if that's the case always save rainy days are inevitable but also still leave room to have fun like within what you can afford i'm going to see usher when he comes here in august and i'm not gonna lie i was so freaking close to paying for the meet and greet like of course it is an insane amount of money but i i really almost talked myself into it especially after the super bowl i was like i could definitely meet usher and he's not doing the meet and greets and like all the the stops that he makes on tour but this one he is and i i was so close to doing it but mm -mm. like here's another money lifesaver just because you can buy something does not mean you should and so i just got you know a regular 200 dollars ticket in a good section i also got so lucky because there was only one like ticket left in that section and typically when there's only one like one seat left the like in a section the price goes down because the arena is just trying to fill that section and so i got a great seat for that price like those tickets are so expensive usher is so hot right now like i'm really glad that i got a ticket at, at that price i was not going like if i had to pay more like more than that but there are so many like little ways to still have fun but not break the bank and I'm definitely wearing something that I already have to the show. Like if you're trying to save money, remember that you do not always need to get something new to wear for every special event. Renting clothes is also becoming like way more popular too. So that when you only need like something really nice for just one night or one big occasion, there's rent the one rent the runway, there's fashion pass. None of this is sponsored. Like these are just becoming more popular. I spend, like I said, on experiences over things, but even with experiences, I have my limit and I try to be smart about how much money I'm spending. Like if I hadn't seen an inexpensive ticket, like I said, in a really good section, I would not have paid over $300 for a ticket. Obviously, it depends on the artist for me. Like I paid a lot to see Beyonce on the Renaissance tour last year because it was one of those once in a lifetime experiences for me. Even though I had seen Beyonce before, this was just such an iconic tour. It was literally like being a part of history. Same thing with Taylor Swift. I would pay a lot of money to see her, honestly. Like if I could get a freaking ticket, it is just impossible to get a ticket. <laughs> I do not know how people are getting them. And I'm like still holding out hope because she's doing three nights in Miami this year on my birthday. Like it would just be so perfect. Other sites like still have tickets available, but I only trust Ticketmaster. I'm sorry. I'm one of those people like and they're, the tickets on there are sold out. And so said all that to say i love experiences but i'm mindful about picking and choosing where i go and how much i spend on things also i do not mind saying no to the small stuff so that i have more money to spend on the big stuff to me clothes bags going out to eat going to the bars makeup lattes getting my nails done like all of that is the small stuff to me and i would rather like not spend a ton on that kind of stuff so that i have more to spend on plane tickets and concerts and hotels and the bigger stuff like that and just more to have in savings also having free or inexpensive hobbies is great hot girl walks with friends blew up last year that was like one of the biggest trends last year hot girl walks was everywhere um, movie nights are great watch parties just home things that you don't really have to spend money on, just enjoying friends or family's company and watching something great, um, watching something that you like. A good phone or FaceTime conversation is always fun, does not cost anything. Um, I also love books. As you guys know, I mainly read on my Kindle. I think I got a like discount with Kindle because I have Amazon Prime, but it just saved me like it's, it has saved me a lot of money because I'm not like buying books anymore. Um, but I am 
just spending like the I think it might be like eleven dollars a month on for Kindle Unlimited, and just getting tons of books rather than buying individual physical books like I used to. There's nothing wrong with like turning. There's still like nothing like turning an actual page. Like I just love the feel of a book, but it was just it was creating way too much clutter for me, and I do not reread my books, especially not the fiction ones. So I just I read on my iPad Mini or my phone when I'm like taking the train so that I like if I'm somewhere I don't want to take on my iPad but that is what I've used I love the Kindle app I love Kindle Unlimited and it's just it saved me like a lot of money because there's so many like authors have a lot of deals with Kindle and so uh, so many books on there are just included with Kindle Unlimited um so that is one thing that has definitely saved me money like a not a free hobby but a very inexpensive hobby reading, working out. I have a treadmill, investing. I'm investing in a weight set. I love my jump rope and just doing exercises where I don't need equipment like crunches is super easy. I don't have to pay for a gym membership. It's easier for me to just exercise at home and it saves me time and money. As with all of these, do what works for you. Of course, like there are amenities and gyms that I enjoy. The equipment, obviously, classes, if you like a group setting. I love a good pool. Swimming is my favorite workout, but a gym just isn't a necessity for me right now. So I do it at home. When it comes to going out, it's always less expensive to pregame with a drink rather than buy drinks out. Cocktails now are like $20 most places. <laughs> like, Also, make sure that you check your like local happy hours because um, when you go out like with your friends or whoever you want to go out with where the drinks are half price or cheaper, there's always a way to save money and still have a good time. When I go out to dinner, I usually only drink water unless I really like want to try a cocktail or um, if I'm like somewhere like a fancy Italian place, I'll get wine just because it's like a part of the experience. But if I'm just going to dinner, I just get like the food and water. I just had sake for the first time, side note, <laughs> at this sushi restaurant, Azumi, and no, was that? No, it was raw sushi, and it was so good. Um, I don't eat sushi, but they have, like, the best shrimp fried rice, and I had sake for the first time, and it was good. I'd never had it before. Um, I heard that it's, like, similar to wine, and I'm not, like, a wine girly, but it was good, and they, the place I went to had, like, different flavors. They had, like, peach, and the one I had was, like, peach hot. You can get it hot or cold. But that like that's something that just went along with the experience and I'd never had it before. And so I'll do stuff like that every once in a while. Think of free or inexpensive fun things that you can do. Um, fun things that you can do. Think of also like stuff like shows and trips and ways to save on those things when you can. Off season and travel during the week is almost always less expensive than going on a weekend or a holiday. Just an FYI, like it's always going to be cheaper to travel off season and during the week. Um, next is friendships, relationships, dating. Adult friendships are different like after high school and college because most of the, most of the time you don't have those built in friendships anymore. And seeing the same people at the same time at the same place every day. And if you have good friends that you keep in touch with from childhood and school and college, those friendships are great to maintain if it's possible to stay in touch. Being a part of a community is another good way to make friends. For me, it's church. If you can be involved in like a faith community, that's a good place to meet people book clubs, classes, whatever hobbies you have. There's usually a group for whatever things you're into. Bumble BFF is good for making friends online. It connects you with people in your area. I've made some friends on there. Holding your friends like with an open hand is also really important because like I said, people are really busy. Everyone has a lot going on. Even if someone is your friend, you still might not know everything that they're dealing with or how much they have on their plate. You might not be able to see or talk to everyone all the time or talk to people all the time. And that's normal. But do your best to maintain your friendships and your relationships with the people you really care about and that you really want to be in your life for a long time. Just like friendships look, look different for everyone, dating and romantic relationships also look different for everyone too. I have tons of episodes on dating and love if you want a more in-depth conversation about like that topic. But for this episode, I'll just say do not settle for less than what you really want. 
and like get as clear as possible about what you do and do not want in a partner. Be specific about your non-negotiables and also specific about the things that you're willing to compromise on. It'll make dating a lot easier when you're clear about what you do and don't want in a partner. And also get specific about what you do and don't want in a relationship. Are you here just like for a good time or for a long time? Nothing wrong either way. Just be honest with yourself and other people so that you're not wasting anyone's time. And also honest about what you're able to do and not do right now and in the future. Whether you do or don't want to get married, you do or don't want kids, you want to live in the same place um, that you live now or you want to move. Maybe you want to go back to school at some point. Maybe you want to start a new career. Like There are so many different things to figure out when it comes to building a life with someone else. Um, If you want that kind of long-term relationship with someone. And it's also okay to just not know everything that you do and don't want yet. We have all been in situations where like life or God or whatever you want to call it makes those like big life decisions for us. And like things just happen sometimes. Life happens, unexpected things happen, but it just makes life easier when you know and you just have like a general idea of what you want and are planning accordingly Be as honest as possible with yourself and anyone you want to have a relationship with. Also, I say this in almost every single episode, but make yourself happy first. What other people do for you is secondary. It should be in addition to what you are already doing for yourself. Even if you have the most amazing ride or die friends, ride or die partner, loving relationships, friends, family, significant others who treat you right, you should still always be making yourself happy first so that you do not get too dependent on other people for your own happiness. If you are in school, like wanting to go to college or go back to college, remember that you do not have to always get a job in the thing that your degree is in. I am very pro-education. I do not always think it's worth the debt. And so take that into your, like take that into your consideration. I'm really glad that I went to a local college because I did not have to take out any student loans. Even though I did want to go to college in New York City, Being able to graduate debt-free was a much better decision for me, and I am glad that I went the route that I did. I'm glad that I have a degree because I do believe that it gives you an edge on your resume when applying to jobs. And depending on the job, a lot of employers don't care what the degree is in. When they see that you have it, it's a sign of, it's basically just a sign that you can stick to something, see it through and finish. Having a degree is kind of like having good credit. Credit history like shows a lender or a company can trust you or not trust you to make the payment on time. Having a degree is kind of like that now. I do think we're moving towards a time where college and having a degree won't be as big of a deal anymore for a lot of jobs, depending on um, the field that you want to go into. But I will say just the overall experience of college really is really beneficial. I learned way more outside of the classroom in college than in the classroom. Like it's just a really good period to get better at time management, develop relationships, friendships, internship opportunities, get some experience in different areas, join clubs or groups, meet a lot of different people from so many different places. If you're someone who's on the fence about college and you can afford it, I'd say to go for the experience, if nothing else. And in most cases, having a degree will honestly just make people take you a little more seriously and give you a bit of an edge in a lot of circles. It's not always fair, but it's just true in most cases, unfortunately. But when it comes to getting hired, personality and experience is everything. But having a degree does make a difference for most employers. Not all, obviously, like people, like I said before, are just carrying less and less nowadays. But a degree still carries some weight, like especially depending on the field. And don't be afraid to change your mind or work jobs different from what you, what you might have had in mind. Your 20s are definitely just the time to try every single thing that you want. Take risks try the things, see what happens. You can get away with a lot when you're young. Like I will say that you can definitely get away with a lot when you're young, especially if you don't have a a family to take care of yet or a ton of added responsibilities. Use the time and freedom to your advantage as much as possible. Also a life hack that I got from Lauren Bostic, if you want to start your own business or you are like 
a creative or creator and want to work on your art or craft, get a service job, waitress, bartend, server, nanny. Like I mentioned before, nannying is one of my side hustles. Get a service job, work at night if you can, and work on your business or art or whatever you're trying to create during the day. There is usually a lot of money in service jobs. They are so underrated. Some pay way more um, than a lot of office jobs that I know and are a lot less time consuming than a lot of the big fancy jobs. And they are great, especially in your 20s, because they provide flexibility and you don't have to take those jobs home with you. Like if you're serving once you once you clock out, you're done. Like after, you know, I nanny, I'm done like there. I don't take that home with me unless you live in, of course. But um, those are just like very, you know flexible jobs and you can work on the things that you're really passionate about while also making money moving on to a little bit about health and taking care of yourself self-care in your 20s i know you've heard it a thousand times especially if you have listened to my other episodes do your best to live a healthy lifestyle and develop good habits and and good routines now um, so that you're setting yourself up for a healthy well-rounded life in the future i love the cheesy quote do things today that your tomorrow self will thank you for it something like that but basically now is the time to start setting yourself up for success as much as possible limit your alcohol sleep drink a lot of water try not to have a ton of fast food go to the dentist and the doctors i'd know for because i know (laughs) it is like this for me having to make your own appointments as an adult is such a struggle for some reason i know most people hate going to the doctors and the dentist but Like a quick visit now is worth way more than having to have a really long hospital stay for something that you didn't get checked out or didn't know was going on. So just try to get in like a good mindset when it comes to your health as early as you can. I have heard so many older people say like it's really hard to change your habits later in life when you're more stuck in your ways and don't want to do things differently. Mental health and physical health go hand in hand. What you put in your body literally feeds your brain. If you want your brain to operate at a high, healthy level, you have to feed it well. Mental health is such a broad area of life. Obviously, therapy is important if you need it. Counseling, journaling is number one, like my number one, like mental health, healthy mental health self care practice. Meditation helps a lot of people. I don't meditate, but I have practices like journaling that do put me in a meditative state, if that makes sense. Like the things that I do to clear my mind and get in a zone where I'm able to tune everything else out is my meditation. Reading my Bible, exercise, taking a walk, prayer, rest, doing things in silence, having phone free time is meditation for me because phones are so addicting, so stimulating. And it's just the complete opposite of zoning out and getting in a Zen state. Growing up, I remember having like actual quiet time in school. Like it was a thing, like we had designated quiet time. I'm not sure if that still happens in schools anymore, but I make myself have quiet time now and do things in silence. As much as I love having a podcast or music on in the background when I'm doing tasks like cooking, cleaning, walking, outlining this podcast whatever at least once a day i'll make myself just do things in silence like because quiet is so rare now it makes a huge difference when it comes to mental health you wouldn't think because it's such a small thing but especially if you're someone who feels overwhelmed or like you just need a breather quiet time doing things in silence and phone free time are game changers And getting comfortable with silence and your own company makes you more independent. And I think it makes you more mature. I can't really explain it, but it's like in the same category as making yourself happy. Being comfortable and happy with yourself and in your own company is such a flex. It is amazing to have people like make you feel good and show up for you. But when you're not told when you're when you're not totally dependent on them to do those things for you. And you know how to do that for yourself, in my opinion, is one of the keys to like a great adulthood and just a great life in general. All the things that you want family, friends, partners to do for you, make sure that you are doing those things for yourself too, even when you do have other people doing them for you. 
This is a perfect segue into identity and confidence in your 20s. Like I just said, you do get more confident when you make yourself happy and uncomfortable with your own company. How you see yourself is everything and it will affect every single decision you make in life from what you wear to who you surround yourself with, what you put in your body, what you consume, the jobs you get, the money you make how you spend your money, how you treat other people. The easiest way to know how someone feels about themselves is to watch how they treat you and treat other people. Like that's, there's a that saying, hurt people hurt people. And the same is true for all other emotions. Like happy people make other people happy. Loving people make other people feel loved. One of the universal laws of life, treat others the way you want to be treated. Treat your neighbor as yourself. I know it's cheesy, but kindness goes so freaking far, like way farther than hate and negativity. People do remember like how you make them feel and they do not forget it. It goes a really, really long way. We never know what people are going through. Like we never know why they act the way they do, what they have going on. The people who act the worst usually have like crazy pain and just stuff that they need to take out on other people. Remember, especially when you're just like starting jobs and internships and doing adult things, people pay a lot of attention to how you act and how you carry yourself without you having to say anything. And you never know who's watching you or looking up to you or wanting to give you an opportunity and could just be observing how you carry yourself. Also, when it comes to confidence, I love Ed Milet's like famous quote, confidence is built by keeping the promises you make to yourself. And that is so true. When I tell myself I'm doing something and I actually do it and follow through, it might not, might not sound like a big deal, but showing up for yourself and like I said before, just making yourself happy and proud is the ultimate confidence boost and makes you feel more independent. I also wanted to touch on grief a little bit in this episode because unfortunately, losing loved ones happens as we get older. In your 20s, death can seem like such a almost irrelevant thing. You're young, you have your whole life ahead of you, and I can only speak for myself and losing my mom very suddenly at 25. Losing someone so close at any age sucks, but in my 20s, it's like a different kind of grief because yes, I'm a quote-unquote adult who can take care of myself, but I'm also still a kid who knows absolutely nothing. And so it's just an interesting stage of life. Losing a parent at any age is a devastating thing to go through. For me, it's still really fresh. It's been about four or five months now. It's never not going to suck. It's never not something like it's definitely not something I'll ever get over or just move on from. Grief, especially when it's someone really close, is just something I think we learn to live with. But it's not a breakup. Like You don't just get over it or move on from it. I have an incredible support system, amazing friends and family. This has made me so much closer to my family, so much closer to God, too continuing to do what makes me happy, crying when I want to cry, laughing when I want to laugh, just giving myself grace when I have to say no to people, doing all the therapeutic things I talked about earlier. Journaling is definitely my therapy. Talking during this podcast, like having a bit of a creative outlet is therapeutic for me. I heard Oprah Winfrey say that she didn't need to go to therapy because she had the Oprah Winfrey show where she got to talk everything out and that's exactly how I feel like even though I can be pretty reserved and not an overshare or a venter I'm really glad that I have this podcast because I can say things in just a more relaxed way without a ton of pressure which probably sounds weird because I'm literally talking to the, to, to the internet which should be scary but for me it just feels like I'm talking either to everyone or no one at all which I kind of like like I can't explain it but I love it and I record by myself and so I'm talking to myself <laughs> even though I know that other people listen it just feels relaxing to me and is definitely therapeutic so even if you feel like traditional therapy might not be your thing or you're in therapy but still feel like you need something else find things that feel therapeutic to you and give you the space to process and digest and reflect and go inward and just things that feel like healing to you that is like that's the biggest thing and I'm not like a big fan of the word like heal when it comes to grief because like I said I feel like it's something that I'm learning to live with not necessarily heal from like a sickness or an injury but I do feel like recovery is a word that I would use personally to describe the aftermath of going through something so hard I feel like 
I didn't have to heal as much as I have had to recover, like just from the shock and having to adjust to not having my mom here anymore. Grief feels and looks so different for everyone. There is no right or wrong way to go through it. The main thing that I will say is to live how that person would have wanted you to live. And from I'm just using myself as an example. I know that my mom would not want me to be depressed or feel stuck and not move forward just because she's no longer here. If you lost someone who you know really loved you and wanted the best for you, it helps to live in honor of that person and how they would want you to keep going. I think that is a good way to tie this episode up in a little bow. I hope that you got some good takeaways and some inspiration for this crazy decade of our 20s that is such a roller coaster. We got high highs and low lows and everything in between. It is impossible to cover all the things of early adulthood in one episode. And so I'll definitely do more of these and like as I continue to have different experiences and learn and grow and make mistakes, I'm sure that I will have so much more to share as life keeps going. Make sure that you have fun and use being young to your advantage as much as possible. Try everything, fail, get back up, take risks, break up, make up, laugh, cry, fall down, get back up, feel it all. Like it is all good. All of it. The good, bad, mundane. It is all part of the story. Do it for the plot and cheers to the 20s. I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode. I I'm glad it was like a little longer. I want I love doing long episodes because I love listening to longer podcast episodes. And so I hope that you guys enjoyed it, enjoyed this. Also, I like them being long because I'm not um, recording every single week right now. And so I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, sorry that, like I said, I'm not uploading like every week, every week right now. So, but when I do upload, I will try to make sure that they are um, nice, like have like good like substance like i'll make sure that they're try to make sure that they're really good episodes for you guys but um i love podcasting so much if you enjoyed this episode make sure that you are following this podcast and have it saved to your library so that you do not miss any episodes from me also make sure that you share rate and review this podcast it helps me out a ton dm me anytime with questions or topics you want me to cover my instagram is at mara p sullivan you can also find me on limit eight at mara p sullivan and you can message me on limit eight too remember no matter what your life might look like right now Do not forget to love. Happy Easter, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.